Here is a simple strategy that has helped my students remember how to name compounds correctly. The strategy is to identify the type of compound from the very beginning, whether it's ionic or molecular. Molecular refers to covalent compounds. An ionic compound consists of one metal and one nonmetal. A covalent compound consists of two nonmetals. Looking at your periodic table, the highlighted portion shows you all the different types of nonmetals. Everything thereafter then is a metal. We'll start with the different types of naming for ionic compounds. The first one, ionic compounds without a transition metal. Aluminum oxide shows you the name of the metal, our aluminum, and oxygen, or our nonmetal, ending in ide. Looking at the periodic table, we need to identify our charges. So if you have to pause the video and write these down, these are the charges that you need to have memorized. For ionic compounds, you will always have to balance out your charges. For this example, aluminum oxide, let's identify the charges for aluminum and oxygen. Aluminum's charge is a three plus charge and oxygen has a two minus charge. Aluminum had that three plus charge and oxygen had the two minus. Let's balance these charges out by multiplying our aluminum or really placing a subscript of two that two then multiplies with our three plus charge and it becomes a six plus charge. We want these charges to be the exact same. So I'll also then place a three subscript. That would then turn this two minus to a six minus charge and our charges are balanced. Another way of looking at this is to really lasso, I've heard that term before, our charges where our aluminum gets that two and oxygen then gets the three. They get the opposite charges of each other just so they can make the same exact charge. They would then cancel out the charges and be neutral. And our final balanced compound is aluminum oxide having that subscript of two and three. The second one is ionic compounds with a transition metal. This consists of the name of our transition metal, a Roman numeral in parentheses, and a non-metal ending in ide. Our transition metal is iron, and our Roman numeral is three. Your Roman numeral actually tells you the charge of your transition metal. A lot of times, transition metals have different types of charges, Iron sometimes has a two plus or a three plus charge. So our Roman numeral actually tells us the charge of what iron is within this compound. Your nonmetal is the oxygen. And once again, that ends in ide. So we need to balance out our charges. Your iron, as we saw, was a three plus charge. Your oxygen was a two minus charge. Balancing out these charges, we'll place a two subscript for our iron and a three subscript for the oxygen. We now have these sixes canceling out, which is what we wanted. And your final compound is Fe2O3. Polyatomic atoms just means that there are two or more elements within that atom. Know these polyatomic atoms write some flashcards. I will also place a link in the description box of more polyatomic atoms that you should also know. Moving on to ionic compounds with a polyatomic atom. They consist of the name of our metal and our polyatomic atom. Notice that you do not have your nonmetal ending in ide. A lot of times polyatomic atoms end in eight or ite with the exception of hydroxide and cyanide. We have calcium phosphate. Calcium is the name of our metal and phosphate is our type of polyatomic atom. Polyatomic atoms do have specific charges. So that is once again something you do have to know. Calcium has a two plus charge. Phosphate has a three minus charge. 
our phosphate started off with having four oxygen. So to balance out our charges, we need to place this in parentheses to isolate that phosphate group. Doing so, we'll place our three with our calcium. That'll once again give us a six plus charge. We'll place our two on the outside of parentheses. Polyatomic atoms tend to have parentheses whenever we place a subscript. These are now balanced, and your final compound is calcium phosphate. This is how it's properly balanced. Our last ionic compound mixes transition metals and polyatomic atoms. It consists of the name of the transition metal, a Roman numeral, and the polyatomic atom. Here we'll see copper two. Once again, that two tells us the charge of copper, which is our transition metal, and our polyatomic atom of nitrate. Nitrate is NO3 and has a negative one charge. We saw that copper had that two plus charge, so all we need to do is just have a two for our nitrate since copper is already two. Balancing out our charges, we'll place this in parentheses and place our two subscript outside and we'll have these twos cancel. Your final compound is copper nitrate with a two subscript only on the nitrate. Let's start with going backwards now. So instead of having the compound name, we're given the formula and asked to actually write the name of the compound. FeBr2. Fe is known as iron and Br is known as bromine. Iron is a type of transition metal. Bromine is a nonmetal. So our nonmetal will end in ide and we know that a transition metal will have a Roman numeral. To figure out what your Roman numeral is, let's go back to the overall charges. So bromine is a type of halogen, just meaning that it has a negative one charge. So since this had a negative one charge, Fe or iron must have had a two plus charge. Another way of identifying this is if we were to go backwards, this two would go back onto the iron since bromine needed two to balance out the charges altogether. So we'll have iron two bromide. Let's try another example like that. Cu3PO42. Cu is known as copper. It is a type of transition metal. So we have to have a Roman numeral. PO4 is a type of polyatomic atom. We had to know that polyatomic atom's charge was a three minus because this then allows us to figure out that copper had a two plus charge. Another way of looking at this is this two goes back to the previous element. So that two belongs to the copper and this three then belongs to our phosphate group. That's a trick that you can use whenever you're using your formula and you're trying to go back to the actual name of the compound. So our name of our compound would then be copper two phosphate. Those are all the different types of combinations for ionic compounds. Moving on to covalent or molecular compounds. Something that we have to know are the prefixes, no one through 10, because you do not have to balance any of the charges. I repeat, for covalent compounds, do not balance charges. <laughs> Covalent compounds consist of two nonmetals, as we mentioned before. The setup will be that there is a prefix plus the name of your nonmetal. Next, another prefix plus the name of your nonmetal ending in ide. Diphosphorus pentoxide. You will also hear this as pentaoxide. The most common form is pentoxide. Our subscript is that di and the pent. Di meaning two and pent meaning five. Once again, we do not have to balance any charges. All you have to notice is the di means two, so there are two phosphorus. The pent means five, so there is five oxygen. That's it.
you're done, no balancing charges. Your prefixes literally tell you how much of that element there is. We have N3O6. We'll look at the different subscripts and figure out what prefix they need. So our three meaning tri and six means hexa. So we'll put tri and then the name of our nonmetal, which was nitrogen. Then we'll put hexa and the name of our other nonmetal ending in ide. So we have tri nitrogen hexa oxide.